So last time we had Linwood on the show, he told us off air about a new book he was working on. It was about a writer who was hired to create background stories for people who enter the Witness Protection Program. It's a very cool concept for a novel. So that was then, and this is now, and the book is finished, and it is officially out today. It is called The Lie Maker. Linwood Barkley is back in studio with us. Hello. Hello, it's nice to be here. It's Remind always a me pleasure. to check in with you always about the newest and latest book that you're working That's on. Right. Uh, it opens with a nine-year-old Jack, and he watches his father enter the witness protection program. So set this one up for us. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it is about a guy named uh, Jack Givens, and he's a, a rather critically acclaimed but not successful commercially writer and he gets approached um, to write by the witness protection people to write backstories for relocated witnesses. They say, look, we're good at protecting them, we're good at finding them a new place to live, but we're not very creative at you know, inventing backstories. Could you write those? And he thinks that's pretty cool job to mm -hmm. do, but it's also kind of an amazing coincidence because when he was a kid, his own father who had done some very bad things, was put away, took, went into the program and did not take his family with him mm -hmm. and left him behind. And so he's thinking, maybe if I take on this job, it'll prevent me an opportunity where I can find a way to reconnect and find him. And so that was the was kind of the premise for it. It's a great concept. It's all very clandestine. The Jack gets approached to write for the witness protection program. There's a burner fault involved. It's a mysterious meeting. He has a computer that is offline at times. Is this how this happens or is this all just made up? Well, it's how it happens in this book. Yeah, uh, <laughs> good answer. You know, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of twists and some surprises in this book, I think. And and the thing that sort of I was was curious to tell you about, kind of one of the things that kind of sparked it, which was that I have had in my desk where I work for half a century. <gasps> I've had my dad died when I was 16. And I have always had in my desk since then mm. his wallet. Oh, wow. And I had tweeted about this one day that, you know, here's this wallet that has been in my desk for half a century. And yeah. it sparked such a reaction. I thought, there's something there. So in the novel, when Jack's father leaves, the last thing he does is he gives his son this wallet. Because first of all, he doesn't need any of the ID or anything that's right. in it and gives it to him. And it becomes kind of a, a touchstone, a, a kind of a pivotal part of the book. Is there something that was in that wallet that's still very special to you other than the wallet itself? Well, there's a, there's, you know what there is in here, if I can find, there is a picture. Of, oh, remember of, when wallets have things picture, for places? There's a picture oh. of me in this wallet. I'm going to get you to hold it right there so we can see and, that. Uh, it's a young limit. And there's a driver's license and his car insurance and his membership in the Masonic Lodge and a few things like that are in this wallet. Oh, that's very special. No Thank money, you for though. bringing that Just, in. There's not, a, not, a, it's not a, even a one in there, nothing. That's, oh, that's so sentimental, though. I yeah. love that you brought that in. Um, Lynn, would you churn out books at such an impressive pace? I think we have you here every year, at least twice a year, to chat about <laughs> great new novels. Do you have any time to read? And if so, what oh, do yeah. you read? I just, I'm, I read like crazy. I mean, I'm reading about probably, well, I'm reading almost a book a week. Right now I'm reading, actually, because I'm going to be interviewing him at the Motive Crime Fiction Festival in Toronto, first weekend of June. Ex, uh, former FBI director, the one who was fired by Trump, James Comey, has written a novel. I'm reading that right now. It's called Central Park West. And, but I'm always reading something. You know? I love that. You have such amazing ideas. Do you have... Uh, you know, your wallet was a, was a spark for this story, but do you see things sometimes and think, I need to write that down, that's gonna be a story? Well, I don't necessarily write down, but I will see things that just, that are just you know, that just spark an idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back a few years ago when I wrote, uh, there was a story on the news one day, I think it was on your station, and that, that um, Toronto didn't have enough elevator inspectors for all, the, all the, yes. the towers that were being built along the waterfront. And so I just had this idea, what if you got a, had a guy, a different kind of serial killer who was, getting people by sabotaging elevators. So it's just like something will just spark an idea. And you just think, is this one good enough to support 100,000 words? <laughs> yeah, you know, I guess you would have 400 to think pages. I have a great idea for you. It's uh, about a morning show host and uh, all the people that put a morning show together. And there is a killer among them somewhere. Oh, I think there's probably more than one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Uh, Linwood, thank you so much for coming in, and thank you for bringing that very special That's memento it. to you. A reminder, the book is out today, and it is called The Lie Maker. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.